Yo, yo, yo. Episode number two. This is Philosopher Stoned. Uh, my name is Brian. <clears throat> and today we are going to get into the Finders Cult. Um, if you know anything about the Franklin cover up, the supposed hoax that's not really a hoax, because I don't believe that it's a hoax, I think it was a cover up. Anyway, uh, that's a whole nother episode. Like I was about to say, it's really not. I'm not going to get into it on here, even though it kind of overlaps. Not really, though. I mean, it kind of. I mean, you know. All this dark ass fucking cabal human trafficking bullshit is somehow all connected. So, yeah, some of you might have heard there was an FBI drop. I'm going to have that link in the description because that's its own thing. I'm not, I mean, it's it's part of this. I cover something, you know. Anyway, let's get into it. The Finders Cult. The Finders were a group of individuals dating all the way back to the 1960s. Mostly consisting of dropout professionals. Like, uh, you know, smart computer guys. Went to college, but they didn't like the smart guy life. They didn't like that shit. They wanted some some other weird type of shit going on. So they were a cult-like group run by a mysterious man named Marion D. Petty, who was referred to as the Game Caller. Kind of a sick nickname, not gonna lie. They are called the Finders because that's what they did. They found shit. <clears throat> informations and kids while covering as a computer training group in some uh, reports. Uh, they had around 40 longtime followers, but really accepted anyone and everyone. Uh, Marion Petty had like a, a come he had a come as you go. Like he just like would let people stay there, but it was mainly CIA operatives. That's what he really did, you know. But you can't do drugs. And you must be involved in their critical thinking discussions about, you know, life and all the big mysteries and philosophies and social constructs and all that shit. Um, really, the end result is, you know, you'll see. I'm not going to spoil it. So, I, I mean, I do believe the Finders... I, feel, I believe they were a CIA-fronted operation that specialized in psychological operations on children and the selling and purchasing of children as well. <clears throat> I believe they were moving kids from uh, home to home across the country with, you know, the whole true detective circle of kids being passed around to the elite type thing. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's start with the leader of the Finders. A lot of people start with the with another with the first incident, but I'm gonna start with the leader. Uh, weird ass dude named Marion D. Petty, also known as the Game Caller, aka the Stroller, the Pathfinder. I don't know, man. These nicknames, illusions of grandeur. You know what I'm saying? These are the names he was known by in the cult. Apparently, he was a chauffeur in the military, with major connections to the OSS. While acting as a military chauffeur for a few presidents before they were president. Like uh, LBJ and Eisenhower. So this dude claims he got all his money from being surgically good at card games. So he just saved and saved and saved until he could buy vast amounts of land and property in Virginia. This included Nethers, Virginia. That's the... The Finders, they referred to it as the Free State. Basically, he got his own little little shit going on over in Virginia. He's got two warehouses, one in San Francisco, one in D.C. Uh, Marion was uh, said to have knowledge of Eastern mysticism. Okay. And he had a tight grip on the group, you know, like firm, run a tight ship. So, in a rare interview, he he claims he wanted to be helpful to the CIA. You know, he he was... It's the I'll, I'll link the interview. It's fucking weird. It's a weird little interview. He says, he like, you know, he, he, he wanted to help the CIA. He tried to get in as, like, an asset or some shit. Um, he claims his son worked for America, Air America, which is most definitely a CIA front, if you want to look into that. Uh... 
The children in the Finder's Cult say they look up to Marion as a godlike figure. He can truly see inside your soul type shit. Um, I call bullshit Marion D. Pity. So the reason they were called the Finders because generally they were paid to find information and uh, executed bizarre ways to get information on people. Weird little social experiments like... Just like harassment, it's kind of, I don't know, it's like definitely some mind fucking going on. His wife actually, Marion Petty's wife actually worked for the CIA. And uh, he was part of the human potential movement along with good old Timothy Leary. Also, put on your clown face. He was good friends with Patch Adams. Yes. The fucking Patch Adams. Okay. Whatever. Weird fucking guy. Uh, Imagine like Marion Petty and like L. Ron Hubbard and like fucking Jim Jones all chilling. And then that one weird dude from the, um, what was it, Whitehead? Is that what his last name? The fucking, the alien cult. They all killed themselves yeah imagine that conversation so uh let's go to the initial incident on february 5th 1987 in tallahassee florida six kids were found on a playground ranging ages two to seven accompanied by two well-dressed men in their 20s michael Howell, aka Hulahan, that's a cool nickname and douglas edward hammerman These kids looked like they'd been mistreated, unkept, unbathed. The finders men, though, always made it a point to look, you know, very formal business suits. They looked like they were up to something official, you know. Um, And one of their games, that's what they like to do. All these things they did were called games, social experiments. Trafficking a child was a game. The, uh... The 911 caller, he said they look sexually abused. I don't know how you can tell just by looking at a kid on the playground. But uh, that's what it says. Uh, The uh, finders and the six kids, they were in a 1979 Blue Dodge Sportsman van. The six children were Max Livingstone, age 6, Galen Benkinop, age 4, James Michael Howe, the third, age 2, Honey Bee Evans, age 3, BB said... Age three, Jordan Messino Erico, age six. Now, Jordan Messino Erico, she's the oldest. She's going to be the talker. You know what I mean? Uh, also, what in the fuck are these fucking names? Galen Benkenoff? Honey B. Evans? It sounds like a fucking weird comic book strip for kids that you see in the newspaper. Odd. So none of these kids were from were from Florida. They were uh, their parents were members of the Finders, so they lived in Nethers, Virginia, that place uh, called the Free State, aka they uh, they also dubbed it Paradise. I guess that may be a little area of the Free State. <clears throat> the area was owned by the Game Caller, so that's you know that's that whole area is his. Uh, the parents lived in cabins. I'm pretty sure the kids slept outside. Um, but okay, back to the van. The inside of that van that they found, it looked dirty as fuck. Like all eight individuals had been living in it, smelled horrible, maps, dirty clothes, food, and trash everywhere. Um, finders were also mainly vegetarian, so that shit probably smelled, uh, really bad. Because, I mean, I like vegetarian food, but that shit smells awful once it goes, you know what I'm saying? These are the things found in that van, which is fucking weird. They found a brown bag with 20 floppy disks. Uh, I think they were processor disks. Um, a battery-operated spotlight. Those two dudes' passports. A Chinese-English dictionary. And another bag with nude photos of children. Condoms. A piece of paper titled The Ballad of Ballads Containing the Locations of the Finder's Buildings. Uh, the men were arrested, charged with counts of child abuse, told the police they were the children's teachers, and that they were en route to Mexico to create a school for brilliant, gifted children. 
Uh, police don't buy that fucking story. They remove the kids from their care and begin to identify the children. Where are the parents? Where are the cult parents? Uh, the mothers were affiliated with the finders, so uh, they came forward through a spokesperson, not directly, that they approved the trip and the kids were being taken camping. The mothers would be traveling to Tallahassee to pick up the kids, so the men said uh, smart kid school and the mothers say camping. Okay. So uh, then the police traced the cult to Virginia and D.C., obtained warrants for locations connected to the group. Basically, they got photos on computers of children engaged in cult rituals and anything they could do to figure out who the cult is. In 86, a CI told police that the finders were a cult, been recruited and invited to explore Satanism. The children were used in rituals but never witnessed abuse. Uh, yeah, so it uh, seems as if the parents joined the cult and some kids were born into it. The kids, uh, they were reported as under duress, covered in sores, acting out and erratically and didn't recognize things like typewriters, like regular appliance shit. Uh, one kid said they lived in a house in D.C. with the two men. They took orders from someone called the Game Caller. Oh, Marion D. Pity. Funny quote, uh, one was said they weaned, I think it was that girl, the six-year-old said, which is a weird word for her to say, weans the kids from the moms is what she said Marion Petty did. Odd speech. Some would say they were just smart hippies in a long-term social experiment. <laughs> okay. Bunch of hippies on LSD for 20 years running this experiments. Okay. Uh, CIA rumored to stop the investigation because it had become an internal matter, which is confirmed by U.S. Customs. Charges were dropped due to possible disruption of the status quo. Petty said government agencies trailed him for years because they thought he was a drug dealer, assuming he must have been involved in the CIA front. The FBI reached out to the CIA, but they denied he was connected to them. FBI was confused and couldn't figure out what Petty did. Just, yeah, government agencies not working together when it involves children being trafficked. Uh, the CIA shut down the investigation in 1987 until 1993 when the Justice Department found unresolved matters relating to the group. Could be a second van found a complete, uh, uh, they found a, a computer uh, on Florida State University, a message found on the computer from a finder's member, Stuart Silverstone. Uh, the children were taken to a safe house called the Treehouse. Then there was a bomb threat called on the Treehouse on February 7th. Uh, the police found the children because of the bomb threat. Why would they call a bomb threat on themselves? I don't understand these guys. The bomb threat was part of a game? That's the worst fucking game I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, so, yeah, when they got the kids from the treehouse, the police found the uh, children, uh, you know, all fucked up again. Um, all of the kids showed signs of sexual abuse, according to a doctor, but not strong proof. The parents denied any sexual abuse had ever gone on in the cult. This doctor is Dr. Naaman H. Greenberg. Naaman H. Greenberg. Flown into town to interview the children to see if they'd been sexually abused. He was also a therapist in the McMartin case. Concluded there was no sexual abuse in the Florida Finders case. So, yeah, we could get into the McMartin case. That's some fucking crazy shit, too. And the fact that he was a therapist in this is... A weird synchronicity. He was also the therapist in the Jewish Community Center case, which I don't really know too much about. So, yeah. Um, now we can get into the DC raid. Lawyer Ramon J. Martinez executed a warrant at one finder's location in DC. This is after the uh, Florida arrest. He found a room with several computers and paperwork. Quote, Cursory examination of documents revealed detailed instructions for obtaining children for unspecified purposes. The instructions included the impregnation of female members of the community known as the Finders, 
Purchasing tr children, trading, and kidnapping children. Whew. Fuck. Found telex messages from computers across the world. Oh, man. Using MCI, which is some shit that I don't really know too much about. The telexes would be used to uh, order children, including uh, from China and the United Kingdom. So they found passports for North Korea as well, which is just fucked up in itself. <clears throat> like, where are you planning to go? North fucking Korea? Um, in this raid, police found photos of group members and their children in white robes slaughtering goats on a farm, but explained as Marion's love for playing games rather than satanic rituals. Said they decided to eat the goats, and the robes and ritual were, ritual were to teach the kids how important it was like how important the killing of an animal was like the, it's 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 a ritual but this one included skinning the goats cutting off the male's balls some more disemboweling of fucking just playing with the blood basically weird shit ooh so yeah, the cult was later described as a 24-hour, 365-day-a-year training group for games. So the finders play games. They find shit and play games. Um, so it seems as it was, if, if it was hard to tell for members if they were playing a social game, if they were being sincere, like in daily life, like anyone that had to come in contact with these people, they didn't know... Are you playing a fucking game? Are you talking to me for real? Or, or like what? Well, I, that would drive me nuts. I would just wouldn't engage. I just wouldn't interact. Uh, yep, so the investigation ended because the CIA stepped in and said, uh, Hey, it's an internal affair now. Which can only happen if someone involved in the investigation is part of the CIA. So there you have it. That is the Finders cult. I'm um, going to have some links in the description. I'm going to have the FBI drop that happened, I think, in November. <clears throat> and then I'm going to have that Mary and Petty interview because there's not a lot of, there's not really shit on him. Very mysterious guy. Uh, thank you for watching. Philosopher's Stoned.